Yeah. 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 Sanity is on the line, and I'm flying blind through the darkest corners of my mind. My life is defined by the pain and the failure I read. I believe for Sukati Park. I believe for all those left in the dark without a spark to ignite a fire of hope. How am I supposed to cope with the nation gone broke? A government's a joke and a cop's racist. They buy the nameless and leave no trace. Spring mace in the eyes of the young, and they wonder why they're on the streets with carnivorous teeth. Slaves in the media, mutated by the fast food in the schools, children ridiculed for the sexual abuse, women abusing on the news. We're all in the same news. <laughs> Obama's campaign promised change, but where is that? We're still getting robbed by the fat cats, skipping tax, tipping the hats to Fox News, the hub of their political views. We all lose in the bank scandal. Political scandal is the norm. Girls watching Jersey Shore to be whores, and boys only care about sports. I guess that's why everybody's shopping out of school. James Dean Cool is only a figure of speech. I don't preach, I aim to teach. Preach the closed doors in the back of your mind. Open up your third eye. The lies and skies that you see through. What you choose to believe is a reflection of you. So choose wisely. Don't stand by idly while they tie the noose around your neck. Cause your kid's next house, that for reality check. Nice. Right, right. Thank you. Thank you. Like, racism where I live yeah, is more like, uh, you can't date someone because their parents are racist. Or you can't do certain things because people aren't accepting of their culture. Like, I'm a hip-hop artist, for example. And when I make hip-hop music, some people are very dismissive immediately because they only consider it to be part of black culture. Okay, well said. All right, thank you. Appreciate that. Nice. Take care. Yeah, man, we just wrapping up another Manhattanville MLK Institute annually Youth, Youth with Cops Day. We met up with some of the police officers from around the Westchester community. Like we do every year, we want to get the youth and the officers together so we can hash out whatever the problems are between the two. Try to come up to a conclusion of what we can do better to make things better for the community as one. Well. You know, we've been doing this for I would like to say seven, eight years now. And we're doing this every year, but the most important thing, we need more diverse people. We need more children. We need different, we need more different diverse type of uh, law forces so we can get the full spectrum of everybody's perspective, black, white, Hispanic, everything, so we can really come to the main conclusion. But each year we do this, man, it's a beautiful thing. New kids come out every year. At least they get to learn something for the day. And we hope to keep it moving like we are. All right. People departing. You know we here, though. All right, all right. So, what's going on, bro? How you feeling today? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, real quick, you know, for this accountability uh, project I'm doing, you know, this event was, was, came across pretty well, and I just getting everybody's feedback and ideas about what they felt about it. What you feel, Nate, let everybody know who you are and what you feel about the performance. Yeah, I'm Shaheen. Um, I mean, I feel this was a good, this is a good thing for everybody to understand, for everybody to see, like, what's really going on. And Everybody's viewpoints about how they feel about, you know, the way they can change things in our community and all that type of stuff. Mm -hmm. 
Me. For the most part, I think everything is really good. I like to see all these young people over here and how they really voice their opinion and how, you know, they're making sense. You know, back in the days, you wouldn't expect a young person to talk about the stuff that they're talking about now. So, you know, I see a lot of people's voice being heard and all that, so. Mm -hmm. All right, so now, do you think that young people, young people are informed now and they probably can help their friends and, and whatnot that might leave this event? Be able to help their community and their friends? I mean, I think they could. I really don't think they I do think they could, but this a person has to help themselves, you know. We have a lot of stuff out here, like the media and everything. That's what this kid is looking at and how they're, they're shaping their life based on what they see on TV and what they think is appropriate. You know, we have more jails than we have schools. So what do we want our kids to do? At the end of the day, most of the kids are going to end up in jail because we don't have nothing for them to do. You know, mm -hmm. That's how I feel about it. How is there more prisons than there are schools? So when we get out of school, like me, I graduated. I got my diploma. I had straight A's. I still go to try to get jobs, and I can't get one. You feel me? And I graduated. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I've been through, you know, I told you my story. I've been locked up and all that. Yeah, yeah. You feel me? So there's a lot of things that need to change the whole government media, the way they just going about things. Yeah. So at the end of the day, you, do you feel young people have power? I do. All right. Do. Yeah. No doubt. Okay. All right. Today in these workshops, we learned that perception is everything. And you know, the law enforcement has a job that they need to do. They need to get their point across to help the civilians. Because at the end of the day, just being uncooperative is not helping anybody. It's just putting yourself in a worse position. It's not always personal. Sometimes they just follow a procedure and regulations, and you shouldn't take it personally. You should just go along with what they have to say and try to be as cooperative as possible. Okay, so what do you feel about the whole day and how it went? It was, it was a good experience, and I feel like if it was exposed to more people, that it would solve maybe it would uh, decrease the crime rate and uh, also, you know, just spread the word. Okay. This could be like on a larger scale. All right. So you guys are checking out from Club Men, right? Yes. 2014, I get a key sign. <laughs> oh, who got the logo? Who has the logo? Who got the logo? Club Men, all right. So what's up, my brother, Tom Ray? Sure, what's up? You know, and uh, we're talking about accountability here. So, you know, it was a beautiful event. A lot of enlightened minds, you know, and um, basically, like, what's your idea? What's your what's your perspective on accountability? And you know, or, well, let when us I know think about accountability. I basically, like I said, what came to my spirit is basically the responsibility that we have as an older generation to lead by example for this younger generation to show them there's a better way out there rather than sticking to the norm and. and, and and just letting them know that anything that you really want to do, it can be done, man. So we definitely have the responsibility. That's the main objective of my personal opinion of accountability, to take responsibility in what we have to do for this younger generation and show them a different way, man. Teach the truth to the young black youth, Basically, huh? <laughs> definitely to teach the truth to the young black youth. You heard, brother, I Judah. Know that. Tom Ray, poet, you teacher. All know right. It. Author, you, you, you know, see the book now. My heart to yours. You can go to raisevision.com and order one, and it'll be sent to you autographed and signed by me personally. All right. I'll send it straight to you. The thoughts are raised from my heart to yours. Peace. No doubt. Peace. No, I mean, accountability is extremely important. And I guess the, I guess the way that I promote it through the work that I do um, specifically would be through organizing. A lot of times we get involved in organizing around symptoms to problems or we expect um, the government or institutions outside of our community to solve our problems when the only way that we're going to thrive as a community and develop as a community is if we take the initiative to see what's happening and come up with a plan and then as community members execute on that plan to basically do for self and make sure that we're taking care of the things that need to be taken care of on our end to make sure that whatever needs to happen can happen and not necessarily relying on outside forces to solve our problems because if we keep waiting on somebody else to save us, we're never going to get saved. Accountability for me was straight becoming a black farmer. Like, 
I was, you know, organizing in the city. I was organizing in Westchester, all over the place. And all these issues in our community around like food, around access to food, who does it, around like police brutality, around gentrification. And like the, the connecting piece for me was land. And like, how do we get land? How do we protect our land? And looking into different ways to do that. And farming became my like accountability. This is like what I'm gonna do to make sure that we have our basic needs met, you know, and and that we're just like actually doing it and and doing something tangible and not just like okay we you know we want to like you know get a police you know in, in jail for like killing someone and and then nothing happens you know and so it's just like steps so like what are the steps to like actually make something happen and farming was a solution and I'm like my, my way of farming is a way where I'm farming and I'm growing food for people that need it you know what I mean and then also connecting these issues around like okay land you know in New York we talk about land and it's like um, there's a disconnect between urban and rural so like how do we connect these communities how do we connect different cultures and you know, when I looked at the numbers, it was like, our prison numbers are crazy where, you know, 70% of our prisons are in upstate New York. And all that land that was prison, that's prison land now, used to be farm land. So like, how do we change that? How do we make sure that this farmland that we're like feeding ourselves with is not a place for our school to prison pipeline? It's not like feeding into private prisons, you know? How do we change that dynamic and making sure that the 80% of prisons, or the 80% of prisons that are upstate New York are not feeding the 80% of people that are from the city that are coming up there. You know, that's that's the, the numbers. 80% of people that are in upstate prisons are from the city. And then they don't have access, you know, they go upstate and then they're like disenfranchised and all these other things that happen. And then they count the rural communities for like their voting rights. Mm -hmm. So there's all these other things. So it's like cutting that off at the head and making sure that you know we're thinking about freedom through land, you know, and and ownership of land, and feeding ourselves from land, and building our own houses, and um, you know building our own schools and all of that kind of stuff is like what I'm working on, making sure we have a place that, you know, it's ours. And is it doable? No. I mean, it, it, yes and no. It's mm -hmm. yes and no because I can't do it by myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I'm doing it. I'm struggling, trying to make it happen. But I, I connect, I like, what I'm doing is a community-supported agriculture program. So I'm connecting with our folks in White Plains and, and in the city to making sure that they can help me support my farm by like buying some food at the beginning of the season so I can buy seeds and I can buy soil and I buy everything that I need and then I can like grow food in a way that is like sustainable. Um, but I'm in a situation right now where it's just like um, I'm able to be on a plot of land that is like really affordable because of the owner is like, you know, he's he's sympathetic. So if there was in that situation, you know, I probably wouldn't be able to do it. So it's just like, um, I'm in a situation now where I can build up this business, this farm business, and then eventually get the money to like buy my own land. But it's just like, how do we get everyone together to kind of like buy land that we can like feed ourselves with? So right now I'm just taking the steps to get to that point, and I need people to help me out to continue to like raise funds and continue to like connect these urban and rural communities, so we can get some land, and so we can like feed ourselves, and so we can like you know, you know, stop being shot, stop you know, stop everything that's mm -hmm. that's happening to us, and like doing things for us. You know? All right, cool, cool.